Well, this might be the strangest South Park special release yet. Not necessarily because of its content, but because it was basically a stealth drop. There was a ton of confusion about when the new special, called Not Suitable for Children, was releasing, and it was actually never announced. I wouldn't be surprised if this video is the first some of you are hearing about it. The special takes aim at a ton of current trends, but most particularly, influencers like Logan Paul, who peddle unhealthy products to kids for their own financial gain. And I get it, why would you want to promote unhealthy products when you could be promoting something cool? Like today's video sponsor, The Game Wanted Dead. An incredible hack and slash gun fu action game set in a wildly unique cyberpunk world. Honestly, there is so much I love about Wanted Dead. Wanted Dead is a love letter to the games of a couple generations past, the PS3, Xbox 360, 60 era, delivering a focused 8-10 to 10 hour single player experience. As someone who starts a ton of giant games and does not have time to finish them, this is a massive breath of fresh air. The game has two forms of combat, rapid melee strikes with your katana and pistol, or ranged combat with a variety of firearms, but I think my favorite thing about Wanted Dead is that it's not cyberpunk like you're used to, it's got a bit of a retro wave, late 80s, early 90s aesthetic, really making it stand out. The game also delivers a very tough experience, demanding control mastery and adaptive combat. This game really puts your skills to the test, and your skills are rewarded with stylish combat finishers that have over 50 unique finishing animations. The story itself is a ton of fun and doesn't take itself too seriously with plenty of pop culture jokes and references. On top of that, there are a bunch of really fun mini-games which I love to see, and each level ends with a genuinely challenging boss fight, each requiring unique strategies. And by the way, the developers just released the first patch for the PC version, taking your gaming experience to new heights. Steam players, you're up first with the game-changing update, and console players, your turn is just a few weeks away. Click the link in the description to experience Wanted Dead at a 50% discount. This special offer is applicable on Steam until January 4th. Wanted Dead is also available on PlayStation 4 and 5, Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, and Epic Games Store. Dive into the action-packed hybrid flasher shooter game now using the link below. Okay, let's talk really briefly about this bizarre stealth drop. I was expecting the special to be announced for weeks, and we just did not hear anything. Then, about a week ago, people started seeing sponsored ads with a trailer for the new special on YouTube that claimed it was already streaming. The trailer was on Paramount Plus's page and everything, but it was unlisted. This was quickly privated, and the ads were removed. Then, a few days after that, people started posting pictures of physical posters in New York City, claiming the special would premiere on December 20th. But despite Despite this, for some reason, it had yet to be formally announced. It was really weird, and I wonder if the delay and zipped lips on the advertising side of things had to do with the content being explicitly labeled adults only? It was very weird, and I'm curious how many people are even aware that it's streaming at the moment. Alright, let's just dive into the special now. So obviously the major focus of this episode is South Park's Prime parody, Cred, which is just a perfect name. Prime became so popular among young kids that it was seen as a status symbol for them. So naming it Cred is spot on. You either have Cred or you don't. I got Cred, bitches. I got Cred. Honestly, I didn't really realize the extent of the controversy surrounding Prime. I knew it was a popular drink that Logan Paul and KSI pushed. I knew they created an artificial scarcity to make them rare and cool, but I had no idea their energy Energy drinks were banned in numerous countries for being literally dangerous for children, and that's kind of the core of this special's entire premise. Prime is something that is pretty exclusively marketed through influencers like Logan Paul or KSI, whose fan bases are very young. He never even cared about cred! He just drinks it because some stupid influencer said it's cool now! In fact, they are mostly children, so it does come across as pretty questionable when they're promoting this product to their audience, consisting of mostly children, when some of those products are explicitly not for children. I don't know what kind of scumbags would push adult things on something they know kids will watch. But here's what I think is really interesting about this sentiment. It's the exact thing that South Park itself was met with back in the 90s. I do think there's an important distinction, but I also think it's really interesting that this is the show to be making this commentary, especially when this is what opponents of the show were saying back in 1998. This is from an MSNBC debate show called Shockwave. It is adult humor, adult off 
color humor under the guise of a, a appearance of a children's television show. And I think that's the entrapment. I think there's a certain amount of entrapment is there. So it's interesting to basically see that people are saying the same thing here about South Park that is being debated here within this very episode about cred or prime. The idea that because kids want to access something means the creators are responsible if they consume it, even if it isn't meant for them. Prime has already been banned in many schools, and ironically, back in the late 90s, South Park clothing was banned from many schools as well. There are a ton of parallels. I mean, hell, the South Park movie itself is literally satirizing what happened to the show, with Terrence and Philip as the stand-in for South Park. It's about parents blaming media for corrupting their kids. Well, the film is R-rated and it's not intended for children. Ah, but of course children are gonna see it! Can I finish? But like I said, I do think there's a clear difference between media that is meant for adults versus a product that adults would actually not have any interest in like Prime. But it does make this satirization of Prime very interesting, especially because of the specific state of South Park in the cultural zeitgeist right now. And I think this is another aspect of South Park's self-aware commentary here. Somehow over the past year or so, South Park invaded TikTok and social media algorithms and the show has garnered tons of new fans. Most of these fans coming from social media, like TikTok, means that they are undoubtedly younger. I've been making South Park videos for years, but suddenly, this year, they all blew up beyond anything I ever expected. I'm talking millions of views on my South Park videos that aren't particularly different than the ones I was already making. And the ones I already made blew up a bunch this year as well. South Park is suddenly reaching heights of popularity it hasn't seen in decades, and the show itself is also not doing anything differently. It just happened to trend on TikTok and catch on. And that's why the rest of this special feels like it's sort of daring people to call them out for this again. It's always been clear that the show is meant for adults, even though it was being debated back in the 90s, but with this influx of new fans and new types of fans, they have explicitly labeled this special not suitable for children. Adults only. And right alongside that label, Randy's hammer hanging out for the entire episode. I will not even pretend like this didn't have me cackling. It's totally safe. Kids aren't gonna see this. South Park has had varying degrees of nudity, but this is pretty much the most blatant, really taking advantage of being shown on a streaming platform instead of cable. I wonder if this was a factor in the special's delay and lack of marketing, but this is a pretty classic Randy subplot, which I feel like is a phrase I say in almost every video. When Randy learns the South Park art teacher is making $10,000 a week on OF, he starts his own only to fail spectacularly, becoming increasingly desperate to find an audience, basically using cred, which effectively markets his content to children. As I'm sure we've all realized by now, Randy taking things too far in the pursuit of success, losing his integrity along the way, is pretty much his main thing. That's what my big Randy evolution video is all about. He's a very consistently characterized guy, and this was a perfect storyline for him. And I can't pretend like it wasn't super satisfying to see Sharon join OF out of spite and immediately show him up. I also loved that the main character of the special was Clyde, which I will talk more about after this short break. Hey folks, thanks as always for watching the video. If you're a fan of the channel, please check out my Patreon. It's the best way to support me directly, and I've got some big plans for exclusive content, including BoJack episode commentaries. Also, feel free to follow me on social media, particularly Letterboxd, which is the only good social media platform. Thanks. It's always nice when more of a side character gets a spotlight. They even introduce Clyde's stepmom Janice, which is a nice piece of continuity after his real mom Betsy was brutally sucked into the toilet. Clyde's the only kid in school who isn't allowed to drink cred, a story that really highlights the difficulties of peer pressure and groupthink when you're younger. His parents are definitely doing the right thing for Clyde's health by not letting him drink that shit, but that decision comes at the expense of Clyde's social life. He's literally not seen as cool if he doesn't have cred. I mean, everybody's doing it. It was funny to see that Clyde's parents thought he was having a hard time because of his art teacher potentially doing lewd stuff on OF, but them over-explaining sex acts to him is basically the same gag they did back with Tolkien in Return of the Fellowship to the Two Towers, which is admittedly a great gag, so you know what, I'm fine with it. I was so happy they made Nathan the black market cred dealer too. God, he's just one of the funniest characters in the show. What the, hey, what, are you, what the hell are you doing? If you're wearing a wire, I will kick your ass.
Clyde can only afford an empty cred bottle that he has to fill with apple juice, which is apparently something kids were actually doing when they couldn't get their hands on more prime in real life. I also love that the main cast of characters were just kind of a fun mix. Cartman is an obvious choice. He would be way too fixated on the status that comes with cred, but having Butters be hyper obsessed with the drink was really funny. They just use you and cred to get to us? And those higher up people can get us some limited edition cred? Who has the cred? And Tweak, another perfect character to be hooked on energy drinks. Tweak drinks four bottles of cred for breakfast! <laughs> But the special is pretty critical of influencers and the kind of people that purchase their ad space, making it clear that somebody will always want to peddle products or ideas to kids through social media. I mean, these are literal serotonin machines that are caked with advertisements. All of us have them. Which also makes Logan Paul's response to this special, lambasting him, very tone deaf and embarrassing. He literally just recreated the exact advertisement for Cred, but for Prime, completely embracing the same unethical peddling that the episode lambasted him for in the first place, and sadly it will totally work on lots of people. Love when somebody acknowledges their own shitty behavior and then just doubles down on it. I thought naming the influencer Logan LaDouche was a little on the nose, but who needs subtlety when you're dealing with this guy? But it also makes me think more about the sponsorships I put on my videos. I try to be discerning with the sponsors I accept to the best of my ability. Am I hypocritical for putting a sponsor on this video? I mean, I think there's a clear difference between promoting a video game and pushing an artificially scarce energy drink on children despite genuine health concerns, but clearly lots of people in the space throw ethics out the window to make money. But all in all, this is definitely one of my favorites of the Paramount specials. I laughed a lot more than Pander vs. Streaming Wars, and the way the issues they showcased parallel South Park's own history is really fascinating to me. In some ways, time truly is a flat circle, but also, times have really changed. The South Park Panic of the 90s felt pretty dramatic, even for the time. It may have been a show kids watched, but it was never specifically targeting them. These days, it's much harder for kids to avoid the things that are actually intentionally being pointed at them through the computers we all carry in our pockets. And it's crazy to think that South Park itself is still here to comment on these trends. This clip from that debate I showed earlier in 1998 really cracked me up. Beavis and Butthead ran a couple of years and was pretty successful and then they did the movie and the movie was very successful, but then it sort of ran out of gas. I think South Park, especially as evidenced by the uh, April 1st edition, is uh, really already starting to lose some of its steam. The April Fool's thing he's referring to here was the season two premiere when they bait and switched the audience on the follow-up to who is Cartman's father and instead showed Terrence and Philip not without my anus. This guy thought the show was losing steam in season two and here we are 25 years later approaching season 27 of South Park. Absolutely wild. In other South Park news, they just revealed that the release date for Snow Day is March 26th. I also think that we can pretty safely assume season 27 of South Park will air around that time as it did last year, but this will also likely mean we'll get a tie-in episode to the Snow Day game release, like we got for Stick of Truth and Fractured But Whole. Which I am all for, because honestly, though I'm only moderately excited for the Snow Day game, an episode set during a Snow Day sounds awesome. Though I'll also say the latest trailer did do a lot to get me excited for the story of the game, so I'm hoping it's a fun experience. But what did you think about South Park's Not Suitable for Children special? Was Randy's hammer hanging as funny to you as it was to me? Do y'all hate Logan Paul now, or are you desperate for some cred let me know below in the Johnny. comments and i'll catch you next time peace i stay mellow watching johnny two cellos he talks cartoons he's a really cool fellow he keeps you posted on adult cartoons if that's what you're into then grab a spoon and a very big bowl of your favorite cereal feels like saturday morning cartoon material johnny two cellos watch him on youtube now enjoy this groove and bust a move